from Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts. It's the Cube, covering VTUG's New England Winter Warmer 2017. Now your host, Stu Miniman. And we're back. Here at the VTUG, we talk about a broad spectrum of uh, technologies, lots of virtualization, talking about how cloud uh, developers, DevOps, containers, and all that stuff's coming together. One of the keynotes uh, this morning uh, was from my first time guest uh, to the program, John Benedict, who's a tech evangelist with Red Hat. Uh, John, uh, Tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, what you do uh, at Red Hat, You know what brought you to Red Hat, and uh, we'll, we'll go from there. Absolutely, thanks for having me, Stu. So as he said, uh, my name's John Benedict, and I've uh, been back with Red Hat for about two and a half years now. Um, officially, yeah, I'm one a, of those boomerangs. Huh? You, you, yes. you worked for a while, tried greener pastures, and decided that you know the the, the, the open source <laughs> great Red Hat was the, the one to come back Absolutely. to. Absolutely, right? it it's time to come home. Yeah. Uh, so uh, officially I do tech technical marketing for Red Hat Virtualization and uh, it's a long drawn out title, a tech evangelist uh, is just a little, little easier on the tongue uh, as it comes out. And uh, so all, that, all of that entitles is um, making sure that all of the great work that engineering does is uh, translated into uh, technical value for customers and solutions architects. Um, in a much more easily consumable way. All right. So demos, presentations, keynotes, um, and connecting people with technology. All right, and, and does that mean you're not the one that comes out with these lovely you know, four-letter uh, four acronyms for everything that, that comes out of Red Hat? Not uh, my fault. So, so, so is it REV, R-H-E-V, or do we just call it Red Hat Enterprise Virtualization? How do we pronounce it? So the, uh, so the REV went from four uh, to three, you know, the, the extended three-letter acronym, as we used to call it, is now just a three-letter acronym. Um, that, that changed. Oh, it's just Red Hat Virtualization? That's right. Oh, they, 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 they dropped the E, but it's still enterprise ready. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, economy, we could, we could uh, no longer afford vowels. Actually, if, 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 if you, you've got some storage background, we dedupe some of the letters <laughs> and, and things like that. There's already <laughs> E's in uh, and everything that. Great, so um, you know, give, give us the thumbnail. We don't have time to go through the whole keynote, but you know, what are some of the key messages? Uh, you know, what, you know, there's a lot of VMware people here yep. uh, at this kind of show, so what, what resonates with them? What are they looking for from like Red Hat Virtualization? So uh, some of the things that, that resonated, some of the things that I was really trying to get across um, with, with all of the new technology coming out, uh, containers, public cloud, pub, you know, private cloud, uh, virtualization very much still foundational to the modern data center, uh, and I'm very much gung ho. I'm very you know full steam ahead, right? Um, but we need to make sure that we're still optimizing what we have today, and balancing that out with um, what we're trying to accomplish in six, twelve, eighteen, twenty-four months, and that means that tooling, processes, mindsets, uh, all need to be uh, all need to be set correctly. Um, which means also that whatever the virtualization platform is, whatever that future platform is, uh, you can't have something just that just works well on its own. It has to play well with all of the other toys in the sandbox. Uh, and so uh, balancing today, balancing tomorrow, and that's going to be a little different for each customer. Uh, to be sure. Yeah, it, it, it's definitely, if, if I compare and contrast, and I think of you know VMware, it's like, ah, oh, well, containers, that's a real threat to VMware, uh, platform as a service, you know, like they had Cloud Foundry and that spun out and everything. Uh, you know, I look at Red Hat, it's like, well, you know, Linux is kind of the bread and butter, but you've got the virtualization, you've got OpenShift, you've got, you know, all of these pieces, you, you know, Red Hat, you know, uh, like what the number two contributor in both Docker and Kubernetes. Uh, so you know we, we know that Red Hat does it, but if this is wait is is Red Hat virtualization is that like the old stuff now or you know how, how, how does how does the virtualization team fit in that? Maybe you can unpack a little bit that that sure. interaction with all those groups. Um, it's uh, we we make sure that as I just said, kind of balancing out, uh, making sure that we we optimize what's there, but also making sure that it's connecting well. Uh, with what people are trying to do tomorrow. So KVM is a core technology for both OpenStack and Red Hat virtualization. So we're a key contributor uh, for KVM, QA, engineering. Um, and so there's a lot of, um, I don't want to say overlap in terms of the platforms, but there is uh, overlap in the engineering in the, in the core KVM. So what we can do there um, benefits both platforms. 
Um, it's a matter of helping to shape use cases and things like that. Um, when you look at, you know, you brought up containers. Um, containers, we look at it as a delivery format. We're still looking at Rev and OpenStack as infrastructure. Those containers still need to land somewhere. And depending on how you need to scale that infrastructure, scale up or scale out, is, is a big part of, of how you plan that out. Great. Can you talk? You know, what, what's the what's the typical user? What brings them to, to Red Hat virtualization? Kind of, you know, key applications or key business drivers. Sure. Uh, um, so, uh, mission critical uh, applications. So, tier one net databases, uh, ERP systems. Uh, we also have cloud. You know, what we call cloud transition. So, you have an application that you are either trying to migrate from traditional virtualization to OpenStack, or you have something that's going to take advantage of integrations between Rev and OpenStack using those uh, Neutron networking services, those uh, uh, Glance image services, so that applications that can actually span both platforms simultaneously and, and utilize the strengths of both. Uh, then there's also the dev test environments, um, utilizing the portfolio of things like um, cloud forms for the self-service portals, catalogs, and things like that to front, uh, to, to front Rev and then uh, the, the, one of the new hot use cases with the rise of the VGPU is uh, uh, the, you know, for animation studios, oil and gas, other energy customers, is the high-tech workstation. Right. So, you know, anybody that knows Red Hat kind of understands, you know, the value proposition of kind of just if free Linux versus, you know, what, what I get with Red Hat. Maybe you can walk us through kind of KVM, uh, which is the core of it. You know, I, sure. I could go out and do, you know, KVM and get that for free. What, you know, why Red Hat versus, you know, the, the alternative? Sure. So there's things that, that the community does very well in terms of collaboration, um, open source has been the heart of all of it from a cultural standpoint, from an engineering standpoint. But when you're talking about um, enterprise, uh, enterprise needs, enterprise requirements, um, there's things that, that the community um, shouldn't have to worry about um, in terms of um, providing support to a Fortune 500 company. Um, you know, you, you have a deadline on Monday. And the community doesn't have that deadline. Um, at the same time, uh, Red Hat is, is a trusted technical advisor um, that can help uh, both shepherd QA and engineering resources in the community and not hoard that technology or do bad things with that technology, but still provide customers that, that have those deadlines and have those requirements um, and, and help guide uh, requirements upstream and bring those back downstream into the products. Yeah. So, John, I wonder if you, you know you, you've you've got some good history with with Red Hat there through your you know, you know two tours of duty uh, you know with, with, with the company there. Um, you know, what, one of the challenges for most companies is like, wow, these waves of technologies come. Yep. You know, Red Hat's one of the ones that's done a, a real good job. You know, when I you know I've watched Red Hat, but even you know I read the financial analysts and they're like, as this cloud thing comes, I mean, Red Hat's well positioned for you know. Oh, any private public cloud I pick, you know, Red Hat can be there. You That's know, right. o o OpenStack, you guys are your front and center there. So maybe give us a little insight as to, you know, how those technology waves happen, how people keep up with things, and ha how Red Hat looks to stay relevant as you know these massive waves of change keep coming. Um, I think, um, for me, I, I think it it comes down to trying to avoid jumping at things just because it's the new shiny. Um, and, and yes, we're, we're all kids uh, in a toy store at heart uh, when it comes to technology and we want to go after interesting problems and we want to solve interesting problems with interesting technology, but at the end of the day, we're, we're trying to solve problems for customers in a way that's going to help them in the long term. And that means providing solutions um, that, that we can support with them long term. So that means um, we have to have, uh, we have to look at, at technology from the standpoint of does this product have an end game? Is, and so something might look really good on paper or in a demo, um, but the, there's risk, you know, how much risk is involved? So we can't just jump at something because it might be big 
we'll, we'll investigate it, we'll play with it upstream like we always have. But uh, we have to assume a certain amount of risk on behalf of our customers as we, as we play with these technologies, um, as, we, as we look at these different waves. Um, and, and so I think it's important that we look at the horizon as a means of gauging things on behalf of our customers. Great. So back to, to your bread and butter on, on, on the virtualization piece, John. I, I'm curious whether there are any questions you know you either you, you got here at the keynote this morning or in, in general that when you can explain it, they they're like, oh, they kind of have that, that aha moment as to you know something they didn't understand about Red Hat virtualization. Um, yes. Uh, one one of the things is uh, people are still surprised that we're more than just a Linux company to this day. Uh, we have a, a very broad portfolio that uh, that includes Red Hat virtualization. Um, oh, is that new? And it's it's five years old at this point. Yeah. Um, 4.0 came out in August, and it was the tenth product release, and and it, it represents something that that goes cross portfolio. Um, so I think um, when we explain it in terms of um, helping them understand that that we're interested in in making. Uh, making it easily consumable for them to solve problems with, it, it, it starts clicking for them. Uh, that it's not just about uh, pushing something across the table and here, try this, here, try this. That, that we're, we're truly interested in helping them uh, solve problems. Yeah, so you know, I, I've lived in the virtualization community and the Linux communities for a long time. I, I still find some of those skill sets, there, there's still some of these gaps. If you take somebody that was like VMware versus mm -hmm. somebody that's Linux, and Linux has been around longer, but you know, when I hear about you know, all the things that are, you, know, you go to the AWS show, you look at what's happening in containers, um, it seems to rhyme a lot more than with what Linux, so you know, Linux skill sets kind of have that long, uh, you know, uh, long shelf life and you know people understand what's there. What, what do you recommend for people if you know they're, they're not Linux people today or you know want to learn more? Wh 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 what kind of training do you recommend? What kind of resources uh, do they have available? So uh, there's there's a multitude of things. I would um, you know there's there's all sorts of online training now. Uh, believe it or not, there's a multitude of of things on YouTube for free um, to to get them started. There's a a lot of things um, online courses. Um, available not just from Red Hat. I, the Red Hat training is fantastic. Um, if that's not feasible, um, there's a lot of other, you know, uh, LPI, uh, the Lin you know Linux, uh, you know Linux dot, um, you know, the Linux Foundation provides a lot of fantastic training. Um, so there's there's so much good training out there in order to uh, to d get the foundational skills uh, to get people started. All right. So, John, really appreciate you joining, and uh, you know, for our audience here, if, if, you, if you like events in New England, uh, really excited that uh, the Red Hat Summit is coming back to Boston. They usually alternate West Coast, East Coast, and this is East Coast, and for the first time, they're going to be at what's the, the BCEC, the, the Convention Center right near the waterfront. It's a beautiful location, really good restaurants down at the seafront, and I'm happy to say that the Cube will be there, so I, I'm looking forward to the event, uh, which is, is happening in May, I believe it is, uh, so be sure to check that out, and stay with us for more coverage here from the VTUG. You're watching theCUBE. Since the dawn of the cloud, the CUBE has been there, connecting with executives, practitioners,